Hey there, Fred My Rich, and today we're going to talk about robots versus the SMP. Yes, we're going to talk about when robots potentially take over the world. So, um, what does this really mean? Well, robots, really, they're just uh, some kind of program or algorithm hooked up to some kind of mechanical device. But I think when we think of robots taking over, we really think of, like, Will Smith fighting Roombas or something like that. Anyways, maybe more along the lines of technology, like general AI or something like that, getting to the... Uh, point where it, it can compete with humans on every task, basically. So, um, if this happens, are we doomed? That's uh, one kind of thought that first comes to mind. Um, I kind of think there's a, a positive scenario, which would be something like WALL-E, where robots do all the tasks for us that we want, um, and then we, as humans, would spend our lives trying to uh, enjoy it as best possible, uh, whether that's watching a soccer or, uh, who knows, sitting in a floating chair. Um, the downside scenario for this is uh, like a Terminator or Terminator scenario where basically people are wiped out. Um, I don't know, from a physics point of view, I don't know that this is uh, really the most likely thing. Um, I, I see probably, there's two reasons I see this is not the most likely scenario. Um, and one is that robots with this technology will have to have goals and their, one of their main goals is likely to help humans um, as they get developed. So they probably will already have this intrinsic value of not wanting to uh, harm humans too much. Um, even if they didn't care about humans, the other uh, factor is um, basically I think they would probably only have friction against humans in areas where they would compete for resources. And because like our resources and robots resources are fairly different, um, you know, they're mostly after electricity or maybe minerals for building their uh, parts. And um, in those cases, probably somebody who owns land over some kind of mineral deposit that they would need, that's probably an area of friction. Um, but if they're friendly with us, that could also be a, a great opportunity because, you know, you might get a whole bunch of money for that. So. Anyways, that's uh, kind of the scenario. Now, let's uh, focus on more of, more of a positive scenario where they just help out humans. Um, what is the likely timeline of this? Well, um, the timelines really vary a lot, and this is also speculation. This may never even happen. Um, if it does happen, though, like from uh, I'm a physicist, so my thought is it's very likely to happen, but it could happen in a very long time. Uh, maybe 2120. Uh, but uh, you could have people like Rick Kurzweil, if you Google him, uh, he'll talk about robots, uh, or at least technology being at the level of humans by 2045 and then significantly surpassing them. So that could be a potential date. Um, and if you look at like how people compute what a brain's capacity is, uh, there's some estimates of how uh, a brain is compared to a computer that would put uh, the technology basically being at the same level around maybe 2005 or something like that, in which case uh, basically there's just a software issue of getting general AI to um, basically take on this role of robots being able to take us over. So um, those are kind of the, the broad timelines, but uh, I wanted to focus on how this would affect, if this happens, how would it really change uh, companies. And now there's so many tangents you could go on with this kind of topic. Um, companies may not even exist, but assuming companies exist still kind of in a similar form as they do now, um, how would this affect like the top 10, say, stocks or so of the S&P 500 go? So that's what I did. Um, I wrote down a list of just like the top, about top 10 uh, companies in the S&P. And um, I'm just going to go through them and say like, okay, what do I think is likely to happen if robots uh, can do all our chores and take over basically. So there's two uh, companies right away. The first one, Microsoft, and then uh, I kind of tied in with Google. Um, these companies are really on the forefront of AI technology, uh, maybe cloud computing, big data crunching. Um, Google used to have some robotics, but they kind of got out of that. But generally speaking, these um, companies that are really heavily involved in this kind of tech, I see them as having, now, it could be some guy on his couch who develops uh, general AI and basically takes over the world, but uh, it's more likely, statistically more likely, for somebody who's some big company who has lots of data uh, is more likely to be at the forefront of this technology. And so Google or Microsoft really do have a good chance, um, you know, 
maybe still small, but they have a good chance of being one of those companies that could take over the world, uh, or at least be like the Taco Bell of Demolition Man kind of thing. So yeah, so I see a really positive potential for them. Uh, something like Apple, I think people still need, will, will still need to contact each other, will still want cell phones, they'll still want to search uh, the internet uh, via, via some kind of device. And so as long as Apple can kind of stay in that niche, I don't know if brand power will be as important in the future if robots were to do everything, but uh, I still see the niche needed. And so I think Apple still, you know, has a decent chance of surviving. Um, Amazon, uh, they're like a low cost online um, retailer and also like a cloud storage. I see those things as still being popular in the future, even if robots take over. So uh, I don't, I, I see them as probably benefiting from the labor of uh, robots and probably their business model doesn't change that much. Um, maybe something like ExxonMobil, they're, they're looking for oil mostly. Uh, a company like them, I still see a demand for oil. It might drop a little bit uh, because people might not need to travel as much, but I think with a lot of their free time, they probably would would travel more. So it's kind of ambiguous unless planes go totally uh, battery powered. I think we still need oil. Um, and even that said, we still need plastics and a few other things. So oil still in needed, uh, whether that it's needed as much or not is unclear. So I, I can see Exxon basically benefiting from the labor costs of robots and maybe just kind of, you know, being on the same kind of tra trajectory as it is now. Um, then we have Berkshire Hathaway, uh, BRK Baby. Anyways, they, they're a major conglomerate of many, many companies. And uh, it's hard to know like exactly what would be affected and what wouldn't. Um, a big part of, part of their business is insurance. And actually this is one area that I do think uh, has a high chance of suffering from robots taking over. Because if you have something like autonomous driving vehicles everywhere, uh, auto insurance becomes a lot less important. Um, homes may become a lot cheaper and because they can be fabricated for a lot cheaper. Um, even now they're starting to do 3D printing of homes. Now that's probably not that refined, but in the future if it gets uh, more efficient or if, you know, robot labor is very quick and supply chains are more uh, efficient, then homes can probably be built much cheaper and so even like home insurance is not as important um, so I do see insurance companies as probably suffering now that said Berkshire Hathaway also owns like railways and Dairy Queen and picture framing companies and whatnot and these kind of companies um, they still will probably be around and they'll probably benefit from the labor uh, benefits of robots so that um, it's hard to say exactly how it would affect Berkshire Hathaway, but it does bring up the idea that insurance companies probably would suffer. Um, Facebook, uh, I still see people as totally needing to connect and probably more so online if they're um, on in the future with robots doing everything for them. I mean, maybe they'll have more free time to visit people, but they'll probably still want to connect with people that spend a lot of their time doing that instead of doing what people normally do nowadays. So I do <laughs> see um, Facebook is a company that's probably going to be around um, and do just fine and they're also involved a little bit in AI or uh, big data crunching so they might contribute to that uh, boom as well. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, now they produce a lot of household goods and this kind of company is uh, interesting. Um, I do see them saving money probably on labor costs with robotics in the future. Um, that said, uh, and people will still need these goods problem for the most part. Uh, that said, I don't know if they have a lot of brand name power. And I don't know, if, the thing about brands in the future is, um, I kind of look at a scenario like uh, automobiles. It, people used to always say like, oh, you know, the amazing German engineering or something of cars. So people would try and highlight uh, German engineered cars as being more superior to other cars. Um, but if robots are engineering cars or robots are engineering products in general and manufacturing them um, and they're all able to compute, you know, unless it's different AI programs, if they're all connected to some kind of uh, internet or cloud or something like that, they'll very likely have the same information, uh, very similar algorithms or the same algorithm. So it's hard to imagine that products would be different um, 
except for the fact that they probably would have target audiences that they make products for, but actually being like superior in one way or another uh, pro probably won't be as much of a factor. And so I see brand power being a lot less important. It's already becoming less important these days, but I see it as even less important um, if robots take over. Now, um, so they could kind of suffer that way as far as Johnson & Johnson goes. Uh, and then we have the last two, which are uh, JP Morgan and um, Visa. So JP Morgan's a big bank. Uh, Visa is a, you know, a credit card or a small loan kind of company. And the thing about these companies, um, they, I think they're in a strange situation when it comes to robots taking over. Um, loans, personal loans or, or cor corporate loans maybe, uh, it's very confusing on how this will change because if robots take over and do all our labor, um, what is that? What? How do people get money? And so, um, basically, the whole idea of money is you have some kind of global wealth, and people's access to this global wealth is shared through money, and uh, people get more of this money by doing jobs that are more important or less important. But the more important you are, the more likely to get more of that uh, share of the money or share of the wealth in the world, or at least the access to that wealth. And so. Um, when robots can do all our chores for us, then I kind of see this as uh, something that governments would have to deal with. They're probably, and they, ha they are already focusing on this a little bit. They're doing uh, tests on things like basic income. So basically ways of distributing the wealth to people. And so if people, if something like basic income happens where everybody's getting like a basic amount of money from the government or from the world somehow, then they share in that wealth together, but they're always kind of getting the same amount of money. So unless they, there's a clear way that they can make more than other people, then it's very obvious what they're going to spend. They don't really have a lot of prospects. They can't do something better than a robot or some kind of AI program. So uh, how, how would a, somebody who's loaning small amounts of money justify like, yeah, you can buy this because we expect you to pay it back, but There'll be, I think there'll be kind of a crunch on how much uh, loans can actually happen. And so if that happens, uh, I see this as kind of a, a downward impact on something like Visa. And it's also something not very good for banks um, who do like personal lines of credit. Uh, and also mortgages, like I mentioned, housing, housing might become a lot cheaper. And so mortgages might become less important. And I don't know how companies are going to deal with in the future, how they're going to deal with uh, growing and expanding. So when it comes to borrowing money from banks, um, that also might be less of a thing. If they have enough cash flow because robots do everything for them, um, they might just kind of do their own financing, but that's uh, less, of, less obvious. And then I guess something like a bank or JP Morgan, if they're still involved in trading activities with stocks, um, I still see that as potentially important. And so they could still be making money from that, but um, probably a big change will happen with these companies. And uh, yeah, in the mortgage industry, I guess the only reason, if housing prices really drop, you still might have mortgage money because property value might have uh, a different meaning still. It, it might be the most important factor in buying properties. And then in that case, I don't know if location is the most important as far as like in near a, you know, a, a nice part of a city, a location might be more important as are you on top of resources that are very needed. So those are kind of my thoughts on all these companies and how like tech or uh, robots taking over might affect them. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you guys think uh, I'm totally wrong or do you guys think uh, there's another scenario to this or how these companies might benefit from them? Uh, I'd love to know your comments uh, or thoughts. Uh, feel free to write them down in the comments below. Um, other than that, I, I mean, I try and put out videos very frequently and I'm, I'm basically doing this channel to improve the way I speak to be more uh, coherent. I mean, as a physicist, I'm not the most exciting person to listen to naturally, so I have to work at that. So I'm trying to do that and I'm trying to also talk about stocks and wealth in general because I like that. So if you uh, feel free to like this or subscribe if you want. Other than that, that's all I have really to say at the moment. I don't want it to go too long. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.